Solo making his triumphant return back by popular demand, uh, I believe. Anyways, we got Mr. Tom Becker in the house. He's about uh, 90 minutes from Chicago, just north of the border, Illinois, Wisconsin. Anyways, Tom, welcome back. You are a power player. This is your second appearance on Power Players. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again. I'm excited to be back. Uh, it's been a while, but uh, yes. let's not make it so long next time. Let's not be strange. What was, uh, yeah, okay, so last we talked to you in November. Hell, you even remember what we talked about back in November, because I don't. Do you? Yeah, actually, uh, that was right when I was starting to get into algo trading. Um, it's been a year oh. since, so a lot of things have happened. But, uh, yeah, me and Hogue talked a lot about that with you guys, and uh, that was a fun time. Sure. So um, we'll see what we get into today, though. Absolutely. Well, All Tom, right. you got you do have a trade on right now. You are short the ES from 5790. Last trade in the ES is 5786. And like we were talking about algos. Question, did you get into this trade because of the algo or is this a discretionary trade on your end? Yeah, so this is an algo trade. Uh it's one of my systems I built that uh, is built on stochastics. We use uh three different time frames and we look for uh confluence between the time frames and if they match up and we start to see a reversal, uh, we take a short. So uh, market started to roll over. We've been in this channel now for what feels like forever. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's been like watching paint dry in this trade. So it's like I've been sitting around $200 profit for about an hour now. So. Boy, I think you got my ears perked up. We jumped right on here and uh, look at reading through your, your bio here. And Andre's like, you got any trades on? And it's an algo trade. So yeah, you're, we're, you're in my wheelhouse right there, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I could talk algos all day. It's it's my blood. It's my passion. I do it for a living now. <laughs> and the best part is, is like, yeah, I go to work. It doesn't feel like work. And that's when I knew this was for me. Excellent. When you say go to work, is that uh, is this something that you do your, yourself? I mean, do you do all this, you know, coding stuff and background and analysis and everything else? Or is it someone else? Yeah, so uh, I have uh, three companies now. Um, I have uh, day trading. Uh, company, the Financial Cloud, that we partner with Top Step to get traders funded and help them stay funded, and so they can get payouts. And you know, kind of what you guys do on Top Step TV, we're just another service that trains and educates people and helps change lives, is what we, we try to do. So, um, besides that, I have a algo development company that's kind of the pre company to launching my quant fund that I would like to do in the next few years. But um, got to have a good track record, got to have a good system. So. I've uh, been developing that now for about two years, and I'm really happy with where it's at finally. And uh, I think we're finally turning the corner here. Sweet. You're using any AI stuff in this? I'm not going to go too real detailed on oh, it. Um, like this. We want to make sure we keep everybody involved. But if you're starting there and you're looking for head stuff and you have development, I'm just curious how you're using uh, it, how you're using and if you're using some uh, AI or even just you know some machine learning. I know some of the platforms don't have it built in yet, so you have to look at an outside source pulling through an API. Sure. But just kind of curious if you're using that. Uh, I, I, I'm using it, but not in the way you probably think I'm using it. So a lot of people are like, oh, you can okay. make algos with AI. And the uh, reality is I don't think it's there yet. And so really what I use it for is just to save me time. So it's like I have been training a GPT bot on chat GPT to help me code. And it's not great, but it, it works and it saves me time. And I know usually where it's going to fall. And so I can fix the code that it gets wrong and it saves me a lot of time. And so that's how I use AI right now. But uh I'm excited for the future of it. Um, hopefully, it doesn't take my job, but <laughs> definitely helps. I'm yeah, it, it won't take a job. Oh, yeah, it'll definitely. Take you guys want to take a job? So go ahead, Andre. Okay. Are you guys cannibalizing yourselves by doing this training, these uh, this this AI stuff to program for you? Are you guys cannibalizing yourselves? If they're gonna do it for you, what good is the coder? It's not. It, it can't replace us. Uh, there's certain knowledge that coders have that uh, you you try to. You go try to code an algo on chat GPT and see what happens. It, it probably won't work. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've tried wow, to look, look, at it out. look at them laughing at the better. idiot. I love it. Laughing <laughs> at the idiot with the dumb, with the <laughs> laughing at the pedestrian, the civilian with the joke, no, with the dumb question. I love it. I love it. I, I love I, it. No. Go ahead, Tom. There's just there's just no substitute for having the knowledge because you know chat GPT is ones and zeros. It's black and white. It doesn't know how to read you know, between the lines to see what's wrong. And it's taken from a million different sources trying to give you the answer where, you know, having that expertise, having the experience, there's just no substitute for that. It's just like in day trading, there's no substitute for having five years experience in day trading compared to three months and just reading a course. You know, you need to feel the markets, you need to feel the code, and you need to know how to fix things when they go wrong. Fair enough. 
enough. Right? Yeah, exactly. It'll, it'll be better when that question. question. How dumb was that yeah, question? Yeah, make like? it easier. Ahead, it's I'm, an I'm, okay question. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a very specialized field, so if you're not in it, you don't know. So, well, go ahead, Robert. Please, please. I want to talk more about this AI. I want to talk about more algorithmic training. I want to talk about more of this. We we don't get a lot of these types of segments on, so when we do, it's really nice to kind of dig into it, give everyone maybe a, a 101 crash course on what it is. Maybe we get into it a little bit deeper. But I really like where this is going. So go ahead, Robert. Sure. Um, the thing, I, I agree with you 100%, Tom. It's not, you know, there's that whole debate of it's going to take jobs, not going to take jobs. It's going to do both. It'll take some jobs because it makes it easier. Like right now, I wouldn't have to bring somebody in and say, oh, you're a C-sharp coder, you're a Python coder, you're a JavaScript coder. I need this made. But let's say I know, you know, C-sharp, but a part of it on the front end might have to be in Python. That's where it can come in. Be like, okay, well, that took a job because it does a conversion very easily. And just you load Copilot, it'll go to GitHub and all this geek talk we're talking about right now. But it's going to find Love that it. for you. So, yes, it's going to save time. But what happens to that person that it quote unquote took the job? They're going to start thinking, well, you know, maybe we can do it better I, as a human element side of things. So it, it's not going to let, I don't think it's, it's going to continue to take to speed up the process. And it is going to remove some for sure. But it's also going to create others as well. And we've been saying this since the beginning of time. Oh, it's, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, Bitcoin's going to take over cash. No, it hasn't. Um, uh, uh, computer stuff is going to take over all trading. No, it hasn't. And it's just an iteration. So I don't think anything is just a full stop terminal or anything like that. Uh, hey, the market's falling. We want to make sure we keep an eye on this trade. I have YM up. How is that ES trade doing? We want to make sure we stay on top of that. Uh, we are up about 300 bucks right now on that trade. Um, still looking good there. I can, let me see if I can pull that up on the uh, chart here. So, uh, so I use NinjaTrader to execute my trades, but I do a lot of my charting on TradingView, which is why we have the TradingView up there. Um, mm -hmm. And you just got top step X as well, I believe, correct? How do you like it? Yeah, so I felt compelled to uh, do some uh, prop firm accounts today coming on, and I... Uh, oh. I love the platform. Um, I'm a big TradingView fan. The guys that integrate that. Um, I've been trying to give you guys suggestions behind the scenes, and you've implemented a lot of them, so that's awesome. Um, I really love the the new features you rolled out recently with uh, the trade reviews, being able to see your statistics and really analyze where you're good and bad at and try to make those adjustments. Um, my favorite thing is I can lock myself out after I make some money or lose some money and not make it worse. Uh, one of the worst things you can do is try to revenge trade. And I, that's how I've blown probably 90% of my accounts is uh, I hate losing. And so I have this thing where if I, I make a couple bad trades, all of a sudden I up my size to try to make it back. Mm. It never works. It never works. And so um, it, I mean, it will work every now and then. And that's why you're like, oh, maybe this time it'll be different. <laughs> but nine times out of 10, it won't be. Hey Tom, uh, yep. Tom. Question about the algo, algo trading that got you in. All right, um, is this just a bunch of series of if thens? If market reaches this price, then execute this. How does you, how did you get into these? Your short ES from fifty seven ninety. Can you talk me through? Speak to me like a, you know, like I just started doing this yesterday. Speak to me in plain English. If this happens, then I, then get short uh, the ES. So talk me through that. What those instructions? Yeah. Are. So um, for this particular trade, it's uh, one of my multi time frame algorithm so we're looking at a uh, short time frame uh, medium time frame and then large time frame so we're trying to find confluence and trend and this is a, a mean reversion algo so we're looking for a pullback um, and then once we hit a certain amount of profit we start uh, taking our risk down so we'll move our stop either to break even and then throw a trail on and we'll just let it see what it makes and so um, this one's really simple it uses stochastics so yep. stochastic is a tried and true indicator um, it uses three different stochastics, so different time frames, and we're looking for a threshold to be hit, so an oversold on all the time frames, and then we're looking for a reversal situation. So um, this is one of my most complicated. I think this algo is six thousand lines of code. So while it seems simple, <laughs> the funny thing is the entry part of it is the the smaller part. So for that, that's ah. probably two two hundred lines of code. The exit. So it's the exit. It, yes. Yes. What? Yes. That is. Uh, yeah. The exit's the heart. Yes. Go on. <laughs> so it's easy to get into a trade, and I think everyone can agree with that. Yes. <laughs> and Go on. So yes. What do you do when you're in a trade, and what do you do if you're not there watching it? You want to make sure if you make money that you protect it. So 
a lot of it's, uh, you know, if these conditions do this, um, exit the trade. Um, if I'm in X profit, do this. If, uh, you know, X, Y, Z happens, you just, there's so many different things that you can do once you're in a trade to protect it. Or, you know, you could code it in and say, hey, you know, this trade's starting to go good. Um, we're getting confirmation of the reversal. Let's add size to this trade. Um, oh. So, like, let's say, you know, you could do that, too. You could have it where um, maybe the trade goes against you, but it hasn't broken your stop loss yet, and you might want to average down. Um, a, lot those, a lot of those are options that you can do. Um, now, you add risk, obviously, when you do that, but you get yourself a better cash position. So you don't normally want to add averaging down that's a good way to have bigger losses but uh -huh. it is a, a tool if you can test it right and make sure that it hits your parameters so um yeah the current i think algo we're running is up about thirty thousand since june so it's yeah. been doing really well this is my my number one that i, I like to trade so um i put it on all my it? accounts and no kid uh multi-storks <laughs> so money Oh, we just got a M2K trade, so we are now short the uh, micro Russell. So wow, nice. okay, cool. Um, All right, do you have your charts up? Are these your charts? Let's go to the micro Russell. This is oh, this is really cool. Uh, this is sweet. Yeah, let me, All right, let's um, go to that. Or, let me pull your up, charts. Uh, Show us what you're in. Tell us about your position. This is we don't have a. Yeah, yeah. You said something really good there, Tom. While you're pulling that up, and I'll I'll echo what you said there about getting into the trades. We want to talk trading here. Um, yeah, we you, we all know it's like we look for that trade, but that 100% agree with you. That's the easy part. Uh, we know two things. Like there's three things. We have an entry, a target, and a stop. Uh, mm -hmm. We know where the entry is. That's that's I, I want to say easy because you can set up the criteria. Oh, it just did these things to line up my confluence, so enter my trade. I know what I'm willing to risk, so I know what my stop is. But we don't know this target. And just like Amory said, that's the hard part. And it really is because you don't know. You could say, I want to have, you know, 35 ticks and it goes to 34 and then you get stopped out you see what i mean so it's like wait a second that's where the human element comes yeah. into it uh which well, is really good so talk i see you got it up there yeah i'm Almost. trying to pull it up on my ninja trader here so um let me see if i can actually okay so let me see can you see this or do i have to change the screen i'm sharing i got to change you. With can you this is really cool okay so can you see my trading view can you see my ninja trader chart uh uh robert can we you let me know i cannot no, uh, no we're just getting uh, trading up in the background all right just trading right, Thank you, let me uh share screen let me change my screen here real quick i thought i was sharing my entire screen so let me, oh, good. let me change it to my entire screen hey all right well my question while you're switching um screens here tom is that the same algo that you were running that got you into the es trade or is this a different a different script you're writing that got you into this russell trade so this is a new one I made. Um, this is actually one of my first awesome. Renko based strategies. Um, Damn, look at Robert, we developed this. our own. Yeah. So we wanted to get into Renko strategies this year, which we like the price action of it because it's more friendly for algorithms because it's pure price action. It's not based on time. Um, we had to develop our own <laughs> candlestick because uh, we, we couldn't trust the built in candlestick. So we coded out our own candlestick and it's fully back testable. So we can tick by tick, get the data and create our own candlestick. So it's uh back testable. I have it on a normal chart here, um, but let me see if I can pull up and you guys can see, see what the, uh, the candlesticks will look like where I could show you that. So this is sweet. Man. I love this, this cool. stuff, man. I love me too, stuff, man. man. So I'm all about let's the rank over rank we, yeah, we, we, we may not need to force feed people with the, uh, the quote unquote nerdy stuff, but this is pretty cool. Cause we don't have the, we don't bring this perspective a lot. On top seven TV, we do a lot of point and click discretionary trading. Very rarely do we have Elgos. Now I remember when you came on. I remember you, Tom. I remember you from November. Now we did this whole <laughs> Elgo thing. Yeah, this is really cool. We don't do this. Maybe we do it just the right amount of time, but we're doing it right now. So I hope everyone's really enjoying this because this is something that we really don't tap into. But we are right now. So just to recap, uh, Tom Short from fifty-seven ninety in the ES. That's one of his Elgos that got him into it. Now while we're here live on Top Step TV on Power Players, another one of his other one of Elgos kicked in. And he got into the micro Russell, correct? Yeah, so uh, I, I do run a lot of stuff on micros. I find it helps me control risk a lot. Um, so, that's one of the reasons I trade my own cash accounts instead of using um, the Ninja Trader Top Step is because um, with the scaling plan, it's really hard to have a diversified portfolio. And I know you guys are working on bringing it out there, but that's one of the reasons I, I started the Top Step X account is I love that you guys have the micro scaling there so I can 
I can scale into a trade if I need to, and it really gives me that flexibility. So um, this one is a Renko strategy. It's actually a another mean reversion. Um, I, I do a lot of mean reversion strategies. I like um, oversold and overbought strategies. Uh, this one in particular uses um, a curve uh, called a, a parabolic SAR. And so this one looks for um, a move and then a move down. So you can see, you know, it's looking, we broke this low here and then we were curving back down. So once this started curving back down in there in the Russell, um, we took that short there and we'll see if this plays out. Um, it's all risk reward and back tested over multiple years. So um, it's possible I might lose this trade, but hopefully we get a banger. It'd be awesome to see a, a banger on, on live. Hell yeah, it would, man. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, Robert, for those asking what a Renko chart is, Robert, what's a Renko? And why is it more conducive? Why is it more conducive to Tom's algo? Yeah, so this Renko, there's a couple different types that do not uh, include time. They're not based on time. Uh, Renko being one and my favorite being range bars. And I'm sure Tom knows about those. They just plot on the chart once a certain amount of movement has happened. So the Renko, let's say you have 10 points. It's going to, once the market moves up 10 points, and this is arbitrary numbers, moves up 10 points, it's going to plot a green candle. Uh, and it may move down two, up one, up five, down three. Only when it moves another 10 points, it's going to plot another candle. 10 points in the same direction, another green candle or another up candle. But in order for it to go the other direction, it has to retrace 10 points and then go another 10 points more before it plots that downward candle. On the contrary, a range bar would plot the other direction. So they're a little bit tighter. And I hopefully, Tom, you take a look at those also because that's exactly what I do. It's a custom coded range bars. It's pure price action. So you can have five Ranko in a row. It could be five seconds of time or 15 minutes of time. Same with range bars. You're only going to plot once the market moves a certain amount. It takes chop right out of the picture. You don't get caught in it. You have that candle waiting for a 10, 20 point move. The market is ranging six, seven, eight, nine points. It's not going to plot a candle. If you're on a minute chart and it's doing that for 45 minutes, you have 45 one minute candles, which screws up all your MAs and all your volume stuff. It just kind of plays around with it. Whereas a Renko or a range bar, it's, you're going to look at one to two candles and you go, oh, great. It's ranging right now. I'm not going to touch it. And that's what makes it perfect for what Tom is doing on this algo trading because it says, wait, I don't want to go like, well, what just happened? It's been in this price for X amount of minutes. And we, we profit or loss based on price up and down, not on how long it has been there. And that's a really key component. Tom, I'll kick it to you. I think you agree with that. We don't make or lose based on how long. It's only moving 10 points. As long as it hits our target before our stop, it could be five seconds, five minutes, or five hours. We're done. We don't care about time. Correct me if I'm wrong and talk about your algo. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I developed on regular candlesticks my, my first year and a half uh, in development, and we got some really good stuff out of it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I, I, I stayed away from Renko because of the optimization and backtesting uh, problems that it normally has with uh, built-in Renko charts on everything. And then this year, we're like, we're just going to make our own candle. <laughs> and so we finally did that. Uh, one of my boys, Benjamin, helped me out with that because I was not super familiar with creating candles. So shout out to him. Thank you very much for helping. Shout me out, that. Benjamin. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I've been really happy with some of the stuff we're developing. We're continuing to develop and learn how to accurate backtest with it, and we've come a long way. So this is this is a new one. This is actually right now on a simulation account. So I want to make that clear. It's not actually on my, my cash account, but I wanted to share it because it's cool. And um, yeah. I, I always test stuff in simulations first because you don't want 100%. to just assume the back test is going to be the same as live. So generally we develop, we test, we optimize, we put it on a simulation account for a month or two. If it passes our criteria, then we'll, we'll move it to our cash accounts, right? And we'll see how it does. And if it keeps performing, we'll keep it. So um, this one's pretty cool. I, I really like it. And uh, yeah, how, I have it on. How many, how many trades, how many algos you got running? You said you have four different algos running? Uh, on my cash accounts, I have four. Um, Your cash accounts, cool. Overall, how, often, how, many trades, how many trades a day are you, would you on average, are you taking amongst those four? Three to five. Three to five. Um, three to five not a day. lot. Um, yeah, we're looking for very specific conditions. And we want volatility. So we don't want chop. And so a lot of them are coded to try to avoid chop. So we're looking oh. for days that are either trending or they have, you know, good up and down movement where we could take advantage of that. You know, we don't need to capture all of it. We just need a piece of it. So right. um, the days like, right. uh, was, it, was it Monday that just was like after 11 o'clock yesterday, right. it was just like a straight line across and <laughs> yeah. nothing took a trade there. And 
Okay. And uh, it was great. And I was but like, yesterday. Oh, we avoided. Yeah, that was uh, yesterday, I think. I was like, well, hopefully that doesn't happen again when I come out. Because after 11, which is, I'm in Central Time too, it was like literally just a flat line across. I think we moved 20 points the rest of the day. It was wild. Oh, that was Monday, yes. Monday. But yesterday we had that big V-shaped Monday, Monday, bounce. sorry, Monday. Yeah, yesterday right. we had that big V-shaped bounce. So basically, what I'm, why, I'll be honest with what I'm asking you. I'm asking you because I'd like to kind of bring more of a spotlight to this algorithmic trading. And we'd obviously do it. Uh, I mean, are you taking more trades in the morning or in the afternoon? Or it just purely depends on what the markets are doing. So we have systems that run 23 hours a day. So some Damn. stuff's designed for the Europe and Asia session. Um, there's some really good uh, price action that usually happens when Euro opens. You might notice um, at 3 o'clock in the morning, actually 2 o'clock in the morning, but my charts are actually Eastern because everything I do is Eastern time on my NinjaTrader. Even though I'm Central, uh, I just try to yeah. standardize it for all my um, clients. So um, you'll notice 3 o'clock we usually get, if we have a big move down, a lot of times we'll buy that all the way back up. It happened again last night. It happened, I think, yesterday too. So um, yeah, if we go to this chart, you'll see, uh, let's see if we can pull up the 3 o'clock here. Let's do it, man. Two o'clock. Yeah. Sweet. yeah. So you see on M2K here, we had this giant move down. And I, I apologize for looking to the left, but that's where my monitor is. And so we had this okay. giant move down. Euro Let's open happen. And we retraced the whole thing back up. And so you can create algorithms that are designed to take advantage of that price action. And so we're looking for a reason for something to happen first. There has to be a reason why we're going to create an algo. We don't just want to just throw a bunch of indicators on the screen and see how they work together because that's a really good way to create an overfitted algorithm. So you're, you're fitting it to specific conditions that are unlikely to happen again. You want to create something that takes advantage of a known market um, effect. So like a euro open mm -hmm. effect or uh, their very popular one is an opening range strategy. So I actually have an open range strategy on SIM right now that also is short. Um, the ES at the, <laughs> it's funny, it's only one tick off of my stochastic strategy. They end up uh, taking the same trade. Um, right. So that one's up $12 less than the other one that we're up about 330 right now on that ES trade. Um, the, this Russell trade is actually turned out to be a banger. No kidding. Is here. it really? These damn computers. Yeah, huh? so. What you got, man? Let's show, tell us what you got there. So we're up about 70 bucks on uh, micros here. And, you know, at this point, if you're manually trading and you're using the algos as a way to assist you with entries, you could potentially move your stop to break even. I tend to just let it do what it does because I'm, I end up making it worse nine times out of 10. So, <laughs> uh, you know, you're, you're testing stuff over a specific period of time to test different market conditions to make sure that your algos are robust enough. So, you know, We'll have times where the market is very trending. We go through these big up thrusts. You know, if you're familiar with Elliott Wave, you know, maybe we're making a wave three or five. And then we go through times where the market needs to cool off. And, you know, sometimes it does it through price action. Sometimes it does it through time. And you need systems that take advantage of all of those situations. So the big thing is, is there's no one miracle algo. I think that's why a lot of people think they can just get one right. algorithm that is just going to do everything for them. Um, and that's just not the case. It's just like building a portfolio. You want to sure. have a bunch of different algorithms that capture different types of price movement because the market's going to trade differently depending on the news that comes out and the data that comes out. And you need stuff that'll be able to react to that. So, Awesome. All right. Well, real quick, I'm, we'll throw it to Robert after this. I want to go around the horn, take a look at the markets real quick. Uh, ES last trade, 57.85 quarter, pretty much in the middle of the range right now. The trade sideways, volume is to taper off a little bit. Uh, in the NQ last trade, 20,207, 20,207, high of the day, about uh, 200, uh, I'm sorry, 70 points above that. Yes, again, 70 points off the highs. They took a look at the YM, Robert's baby now. Look at the YM, last trade, 42,337. Oh, about, what are we looking at here? Uh, about 20 points off the lows there. Here at Crew's last trade, but we're beneath 70 bucks here. Crew did have a nice sell-off in power players here. While we were speaking with Tom, last trade, $69.73. Low of the day, $69.23. So we're about 50 cents off the lows there. Looking at gold. Gold did see a sell-off as well. Last trade, $26.78. About 13 bucks off the highs there. Everything's kind of trading sideways. Seen a little bit of a bounce in the crude off that sell-off. But everything's kind of trading sideways. So Tom, I got okay, go ahead, Robert. I got, I got so many damn questions. Robert, if you got something for Tom, go ahead. Otherwise, I got one for him. 
<laughs> sure, sure. I'll bring this. I'm actually going to pull this one from the chat because I get a million and one also. And it. It, as soon as we hang up here, but it's going to get on a call for the next seven and a half hours. So, no, I'm just kidding. All right, so from the chat, they want to know, uh, uh, Tom, if you will actually share uh, some of what your stochastic settings are. I mean, I know you're using the custom candles and the build like that, but do you have something that maybe some of our traders can, uh, you know, either look at, review, mimic, or, or utilize themselves? That's the question about your stochastic. So you're asking me to give out my secret sauce. I was gonna wonder. I was gonna wonder. No, I, just go I was trying. I was trying to word it the right way. So that's. Uh... <laughs> I was wondering how much you're gonna. No, want to um, give um, I'm not about the full system, but I will say, you know, I'm looking for anywhere between a 14 and 200 length. Um, usually, I use a, a multiple of them to find, like I said, confluence. Um, and you're looking for an oversold or overbought. You know, typically that's uh, 20 for oversold, 80 for an overbought. Um, I want to be even more selective because I want extreme situations. So um, I use what I call a multi-key method. So I want X to be true. And then once that's true, um, I'll set a bull to true, which you're probably familiar with. Um, so it's a true false statement. And then after that, it starts looking for the next segment of things to be true. So it's looking for a series. It's not all these things have to be true at once. It's no, it's a, it's a series of things that have to be true for me to take the trade. So I'm originally looking for it to be oversold and that's or overbought and so in this case where we were looking for an overbought situation um so the market had that big up thrust right off the beginning so it was clearly overbought and right now we're accepting that price action through time and we're slowly kind of going down in a very watching the paint dry kind of way and uh then once the market's oversold we're looking for that confirmation of a reversal. And that could be a multitude of different things. It could be you're looking for it to come down below another certain level. So maybe you want to wait for the stochastics plus price to come below the when it hit. So let's say you hit the 80 at uh, overbought on the stochastic at say the 57.90. And then it yep. continues to go up. Maybe you're looking for price to be below when it becomes overbought. And you're also looking for that stochastic value to come down too. So you're going to make have a divergence, right? So you have the okay. same price level, but you have a divergence in the indicator. So then you're going to take a short there because you know your back testing and all the data that you've crunched yeah. says that that's a good time to take a, a short. I'm a very data driven hey. analytical person. Gotta be. I love Tom. that, Andre, I'll get to your question. Let me capitalize on that and then we'll go right to you, Andre, for your question because it's the same thing. Uh, one of the, and, and uh, Tom, just let's just you know throw it out there. It's like one of the largest, biggest issues of struggling in trading and, and having the problems and something to overcome is the emotional aspect of trading. 100%. So as myself, and I think you know logically and just the way my mind works, like if that's the biggest problem or the biggest stumbling or roadblock or hurdle to prevent me from doing well, that's the first thing I wanna attack. You see what I'm saying? So if you drive a race car and the biggest issue race cars have is the type of tires, all the money goes into the tires, as an example. Do you, uh, do you, that's why I love this. these things. It's not gonna do it all itself. I'm, I lovingly call my MAT, M-A-T-T, is Managed Algorithmic Technical Trading. I, I, gave, I gave it a name, like, hey, Matt, how you doing? Because it's an algorithm, which is math-based, it's a technical trading, uh, and you have to manage it just like you did with yours. So I love that you said that. And you said about the emotional side of things. I just want to drive that point home. It's not going to win all the time. It's not like set, forget. And the longer you let it run, the more money you make. It's just that's not how these things work. But it does take the emotional aspect out of it most of the time. And since that's the biggest problem, biggest hurdle for traders, why not get rid of that first? Is that correct? Do you agree with that? No. Uh... A lot of people will argue that algorithms help take the emotions out, and I would argue they're still there. <laughs> really? Because you're still watching. Because <laughs> you're still watching the trades. You're telling me if you see an algorithm start to go against you, you don't want to interfere and be like, "Okay, I can fix this." <laughs> oh, <laughs> like that. That's supposed like that. to. <laughs> yeah, but but the algo won't go on tilt, though, Tom. The algo will not will never go on tilt, correct? I mean, no, it won't. It it does exactly what you program it to do, but. Um, it's still your money you're trading, so you still get emotional because you still have something in it, you know. So, hundred uh, you know, percent. I, I thought it would take my emotions out, but I was very I quickly this. realized it does not. <laughs> That's fun. All right, Tom, I gotta ask you straight up. Tom, straight up, are your computers better than the human trader? Um, depends. I I I can't say they are or not because everyone's different. So, um, I don't think they're better than my staff. 
Um, I don't think I'm better than my staff that, that teaches people. They're the best traders I've ever met. And um, my yeah. algorithms do good. You know, we just, uh, we just had a $16,000 uh, payout yesterday from one of our guys that has been using them. And he's up about 200K this year with them. And so, um, yeah, they do really good. But I know traders that make seven figures a year. And I don't know if we'll ever get to that point. I want to, but uh, it's always a strive to get better. It's like a video game. You always want to get the next high score, right? So that's what trading and creating algorithms is like. It feels like a video game to me. And that's why it doesn't feel like work, even though it is work. And you, you put a lot of, I, I probably work more hours now than I've ever worked. And it's, it's probably 80, 80 to 100 hours a week I work believe it or not and um Touché. thank god my thank god my wife and my kids put up with it but uh i had to move i'm actually in my my living room because i had to move my computer yeah, setup you are. <laughs> yeah, you into are. my upstairs out of my office just because i have i have kids i have a two-year-old and i have a five-year-old and the two-year-old stays home and I, i'm lucky enough where you know i can check in on my computer most of the time and i can play with her in between when the markets are being slow and it's a, a really cool thing that I'm allowed to do in this line of work. And um, some people aren't allowed to do that because, you know, they have to go in for the job or they have to go on the road and things like that. And with this job, you could do it anywhere. That's that's one of the reasons I love it. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we bring on you and your algos and your systems. I mean, you took two trades out here in power hour or power players. And the market's been very, very slow. We are seeing a little bit more selling here in the ES. 57.81. We haven't seen this price since seven hours ago. So we're fucking... We're, we're seeing some prices we haven't seen in some time. We're finally seeing Algo some Algo never would have said that, Andre. Algo never <laughs> would have said that. I'm fired up on this. I'm fired up with this segment. This one's been fun. So with that being said, I'm thinking, what if we brought you onto a fast market or something like that, Tom? We brought your Algos onto a fast market. I would love to see how many damn trades the Algo takes or does not take. Because we're always looking for trades. People like watching trades. But typically, we have human traders on here, discretionary point and click traders. What if we had an algorithm on here taking trades? You would simply, you essentially would just tell us, what the algo took in and out, something like that. I don't know, Tom. Do you think that's something that the algos would be able to handle, could do? Perhaps to bring you on for a power hour? I don't know. I'm trying to think, how can we incorporate uh, yeah, this? I mean, people love seeing trades. And then we could talk about why you got into the trades. We could talk, you don't have to get into the details, the weeds too much, but just generally, okay, we were overbought. The algo saw we were overbought and something like that. Um, would that would that be good stuff? Or what do you think? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, I mean, obviously, the better the price action, the more trades we're going to get. Um, so I could, I have a scalper that I could run that would be like boom, bang, bang, bang boom, you know. But that, that <laughs> there's no way to follow a scalper, unfortunately, because you your average trade times eight seconds to thirty seconds because you're only making a hundred to two hundred dollars a trade, but you're taking thirty to a hundred trades a day, right? And you might only have a fifty five percent win rate, but because you're taking so many trades. Um, hopefully the fees don't get you, but <laughs> you should be profitable over time just through sheer numbers. But um, this is actually, I pulled up the, the ES trade for you guys. So yeah, let's you can see originally, so originally um, the ES trade went against me. Um, you can see the stop loss at the top. It has not moved uh -huh. yet because we haven't hit the thresholds for it to go. It, it will protect itself eventually. Um, you can see here, there was a trade earlier. Um, yesterday so we had a trade yesterday you can see the lines that separate the days and because i have a large renko setting here let me see if i can make this a little bit better so this was for a different trade. so let's uh change the renko bar size here um and i'll show you the trade that we took yesterday so this is an algorithm it only trades on average three times a week and so you see we had a, a very oversold or overbought condition and we had this reversal here and the algorithm decided hey i'm going to take a short there and not every trade enters perfectly, but if you build them right, um, you give yourself enough uh, risk reward, you should be profitable. So we took this trade here. It went down. Um, it started protecting ourselves here. So you'll see it says stop loss short. So what it did was it uses a trailing stop after we hit so much profit. And that trailing stop will get smaller and smaller and smaller the more profit you have. Not similar to a parabolic stop, but I, I coded this one specifically. So it, it's a custom trailing stop. So more profit you have, the trailing stop kind of shrinks. I call it uh, a shrinking stop. But uh, so this one ended up making, uh, I have a couple different versions of it. This particular one made 600. Um, I have another one that's a little bit uh, riskier. That one ended up making 1100. So it went down here. Then today we entered, uh, this was uh, right around market open. 
um, just prior to market open. And then we went on that little run and we're up about 400 bucks on that one right now. So, it's, uh, so you're up today. Good. All, all the systems are firing yeah, today. Yeah, it's a good day so far. Um, not an amazing day by any means, but a uh, normal day. You know, I'm not looking to make a, not making a look to make ten thousand dollars a day, but you know, I have, I've separated my accounts with. I, I run them through Ninja Trader brokerage, and I have uh, five different cash accounts that I, I have money in each one, so that I can do different things with each one. You know, I might have a, a higher risk reward for one, and I might have like a micro account. And I can do different systems with them and not have them interfere with each other. Kind of like if you were to have multiple XFA or or uh, funded accounts, you know, right. you might trade them particularly different. You know, you might copy trade them all. You, you could do that. You know, it's uh, up up to the person. So, wow, very cool. Yeah, that's great. Hey, you talked many... about you trailing oh, right. your stock down there, and uh, one of the things I come up with. I don't know if you've heard this term before. I, I don't. Know. It's called a ratcheting stop. It's something I did develop in Ninja Trader. Uh, and what it does uh, is, yeah, ratcheting. So if you think of a rat, think of a trailing stop. Let me do it this way. I can bring the screen here. Uh, I'm going long and I have a stop. But as my long position goes in my favor, my stop just keeps trailing up. Well, if you're if you have a little bit of volatility in the market, you may just get stopped out because it's pretty tight. So oh, I only want to have a, a 20 point stop. And as it's ticking up on you, it, it may just retrace a little bit, you know, because it's Pull up a chart, look at any chart. Most of the time, we have a, an up candle close. Usually, the, the next candle is going to retrace, you know, half or so of that candle. Pick a time frame. Not always, but the majority of time. So that will wick you out, you know, so to speak. It'll, it'll stop you out because that stop is so close. Now, ratcheting stop, pretty interesting. I gave you two commands. And uh, Tom, we can share this with you afterwards, um, where you say, I want my stop to be, let's say, 50 points back. Now, don't trail my stop until I go. 75 points in profit and then move it to 25 back and then every 10 points move it five at a time so it will gradually it's going to hold it so you're not going to get stopped out which is fluctuation it'll go up 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 and then it'll jump and they'll go up 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 jump and then each time it goes up it's going to go up and get closer each time so think of think of the market moving uh 10 you, you got a 50 point stop market moves 10 points you say move 10, you move out 20. It moves another 10, you say move 15. It moves another 10, you say move 20. So it's chasing that along, but it's also collapsing that at the same time. So yeah, it's a that's, cool uh, thing. I called it a ratcheting stop. So if you've ever heard of that before. Uh, oh, yeah, similar to pair, I was going to say, it sounds similar to like a parabolic stop. And so this actually has something, what we're watching on the screen here with the ES trade, it has, uh, it has the capability to... Not this now. This template I have doesn't have the setting, but the, the, the algorithm itself we could use the setting. So it it has the ability to have a small stop that only activates after so much profit, and then when you're in profit, it can actually increase the stop. So it so it yep. allows your trade to breathe, and then once you get yep. to a desired profit, it'll shrink it really small. So it is an adaptive trailing stop um, yeah. depending yep. on market volatility. So. Um, it can okay. increase or decrease the stop depending on the conditions in Love the market. This. And all right, question. Um, so this ES trade, this ES trade. Yeah. What's your pro what's your target? What's your profit target on this one? Is this algo? Well, how do you know? You don't have to tell us. But what's your target because to get out? There is none. It it's going to okay. give me as much as it wants. And so this particular what does that one. Mean? Uh, Hold on. What does that mean? It's going to give it. What is, <laughs> you're just trailing so, it. So yeah. So this. We this one's designed to catch the tops and bottoms of the day. Ideally, not all the time, but ideally, look at you. If we man. get a good mean reversion yeah. day. There's days this will make three grand. There's days it'll make six hundred. So um, if the market has, you know, a lot of times we'll get that dip in the morning, and then we'll just trend the rest of the day. And you'll see where sometimes we get, you know, when we're the market's near its top, we'll get that giant move up. We'll get that exhaustive move, and then it just boom, mm -hmm. it crashes, and we get that waterfall. And yeah. this is designed to try to capture as much as possible and not have a, a hard stop. Now, we could program a stop in and trail it to the target. I have algorithms that do that. And uh, the Y2K trade has that, or M2K trade, YM, M2K. Um, that one's up 100 bucks right now, actually. No kidding. Um, this one's up 500. Time? So yeah, this one's up this almost 500. So, this is going very well for you. I must say myself, man. This is uh, hopefully we're we're gonna have a good day today. Um, still a lot of time left. I've had it where really I've had a really good day, and then the last five minutes, my algorithm decides that it uh, needs to humble me, and I've had that happen before. 
I would kick my Elgo's ass, man. I would kick that Elgo's ass if it did that to me, man. I would, oh, that thing would be in so much trouble if it did that to me. Anyways, I'm just goofing. All right, so you're short from the 90s and the ES, and okay, now we're seeing a bit of a pullback. We're bounced about two points there, so this give as much as the market. This is fascinating yeah. stuff. All right, so you got uh, ES. That's exactly what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Right, Andre. Right. Is we know we know our entry, we know our stop, we don't know the target. So what the adaptive stuff does, like Tom has there to to push that again, is that yeah. it's just like, oh, I have a target of twenty points. Great, you have a target of twenty points. Congratulations, you hit your target. But what if you didn't oh, have? Yeah. You, oh, it's at eighteen. No, let's move another ten. Oh, it's at so, twenty-seven now. Let's move another fifteen, and you just keep trailing the target and the stop. We know the entry, we know the stop, we don't know the target. We guess at it, right? We speculate at it. Why not keep going if it's keep going in your favor? Instead of just trailing your stop, trail your target too. I love that, Tom. That's it's wonderful. Uh, I agree hundred percent with both of those situations. I love it. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So what's so, happening right now with this ES trade? What's going on right now? Let's talk. We'll talk about what's happening. Yeah. So right now. we just hit the we just hit the weekly anchored VWAP. So you're seeing a really strong move off of the bottom here. Um, sure. We hit close to low tick of the day. We have this poor structure between these two nodes here, and it looks like we're going to probably fill in some structure there. Uh, potentially go back to the weekly point of control here. So yeah, I'm going to give back some money here, most likely on this trade, and that's okay. Um, as long as it goes down eventually after that. But uh, yeah, we're just filling out some poor structure here, um, seeing if uh, sellers can step back in after we get this move up here. We are in a clear channel down. We've been in a, a clear channel down all day. And you can see, you know, we got this ES right here, I got up here on my trading view. Um, and all these indicators on the chart here are all automated. These two lines are the only thing I've drawn on here. This is some of the coolest stuff that we work on with TradingView. Um, this is a custom tick chart on the bottom that we developed with uh, signals for oversold and overbought. We have all right. of our weekly levels here with the weekly POCs, the previous day PV POC, monthly as well. Um, all of our value areas are, are automated for us. We even have all of our typical reversal times on the day here. So you got your opening fuel, um, potential first reversal, um, initial balance, you got our lunch here. And so, you know, these are tools that we help for manual trading. Um, and we really like using those because I'm a big fan of auction market theory. That's primarily what we yeah. do is auction market theory. I know it's a very popular, I know, um, I think I heard uh, D talking auction market theory early today, potentially, I think I heard her talking about value areas um, yes. where buyers yeah. and sellers step in typically. So I know it's a tried and true method. So why break the wheel if it's already invented? Like, let's just use what works. <laughs> so, Dude, I'm uh, loving we'll this, man. I'm loving this. We're gonna bring you back on for sure. Uh, Robert, you got anything else for him? Because I want to save more. I don't want to empty <laughs> the clip, so to speak, on this. Uh, yes, I want. Before, before, we need more Tom. We need more Tom and his algos. Does each one of your algos have a name, Tom? I'm dying to ask. Is that a dumb question? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, I, I I have a lot of fun and creative names. Um, you would, man. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, give me uh, one. Give me one name. Here. Give me one. Give me one. What, what's one of the names? Uh, so. A lot of all my Renko strategies are based on fast food restaurants. So um, I have Burger King, I have McDonald's, I have KFC, I have uh, Culver's uh, because I'm from the Midwest. So we like our Culver's here. Um, we have uh, our stochastics are kind of Star Wars based. So we have Yoda, we have yeah. Grogu, we have <laughs> we have a lot of different Star Wars ones. And then uh, I have some other ones. Uh, I'm a sci-fi nerd, so I have uh, an opening range strat that's called The Expanse. Um, wow. I have a daily trader that's meant to take one trade a day that's called The Pill. Take your daily Robert pill. Robert loves it. And then, Robert uh, loves this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, uh, awesome. I, had a, I had one that was, uh, I call it the TC missile, Tom's Cruise missile. So, wow. Uh, All right. This is getting a little too dad <laughs> jokish for me. This is getting a little too dad. I love it, man. All right, Tom, we've had a lot of fun with you today. I hope that people are really loving it in the chat. Please click like, please click subscribe. This has been so much fun. We got more coming up. We got Pass with the Pro coming up here. We got group coaching, shoulder tap. You know what it is here on Top Step TV. Anyways, and we do have a bond. We have a five year coming out real quick, but I want to throw it to you, Tom. We really like our guests. We really want we want to do a fun question, right? Get to know Tom the person, not Tom just the computer algo programmer. So my man Eddie's gonna jump in here. Eddie, hey, Tom, how are you doing, are Tom? One question. Go ahead. All right, hey, Tom. I got twenty four questions here. Pick a number between okay. one and twenty four, and I'm gonna ask you that question. If you give us a short answer. That would be great. Eleven. 
11, 11, 11, 11. All right, Tom, what's the most craziest thing you've ever done? Ooh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> careful. No, um, careful. we'll go PG with this one. Um, <laughs> I have a uh, zip line between two mountaintops uh, over a thousand feet above the ground. That was. Uh, Good answer. That was. Where was this? It took. Uh, Dominican Republic, so it's through the two highest points in the Dominican, and we wow. it was about a, a hour zip line tour. They just peak to peak to peak, and uh, we almost weren't able to do it because my wife had a panic attack because uh, she is not a good heights person, and I think she kept her eyes closed the whole time. But she did it. Props to her, and uh, it was her. really cool. Like I, my heart was <laughs> going crazy. I would imagine, and that was. Uh, I've always wanted to jump out of a plane, but I haven't had the the guts to do that one yet. We'll talk to Robert. Robert jumps out of a plane. Oh, uh, perfectly good plane. No. <laughs> yes, perfectly, good, perfectly good plane. Yeah, that's what my wife goes. Why would you jump out of a perfectly good plane? Love it. Because <laughs> it's fun. Because <laughs> right, it's fun. Thanks, Tom. Back to you, Andre. Yeah, good, great question, Eddie. Good response, Tom. Tom, we're going to have you back for sure. Robert, that was a whole heck of a lot of fun, man, here on Top Step TV. Boy, we ran out of time. That goes went by so fast. I don't know. We got coming up next, we got shoulder tap with Jack and Ben. We have group coaching David Green in the house. I did see a form pinned to the top of the chat. There he is. Get your questions in for David Green. Then we got passed with the pro this afternoon. And as always, power hour at the buzzer. You know what it is. Tom, thank you so, so much, Robert. Great job today. Again, we got shoulder tap coming up next here on Top Step TV. Let's go.